Hello Tubesers, I'm back with another video. Uh, yes, was it three in three days? Something like that. <laughs> uh, these are the Vietnam figures that I've been working on. Uh, it's just taken a bit longer than I expected uh, because uh, I was putting some more bits and pieces on the bases and I purposely have 30mm MDF round bases on these ones uh, just because I like to add a few extra bits on so you know they're, they're probably slightly larger than the average gaming pieces uh, base wise um, I imagine people have put them on 20s was it 20s 25 something like that uh, but I just like telling a little bit of a story uh, with the bases as well it puts the figure into context um, so yeah the, their Empress miniatures metal 28 millimeter uh, United States Marine Corps uh, set in the Battle of Hue in the Tet Offensive in Vietnam 1968. I thoroughly enjoy working on these. Uh, you've got to be careful on some of them. They've got some very fine mould lines which will catch you out and they catch me out from time to time. And I've actually had to paint two in. So what you can do if you've got a faint mould line is sometimes paint it in as a, as a crease and whatever. I actually accentuate the, the mould line by painting a dark uh, as if I would do a, a crease and then a lighter one on top. It's not ideal, but sometimes you've got that far into the painting, it's not worth stripping out the, the, the figure down again to start again. Um, but yeah, really enjoyable figures. I was having a look on their website today, not that I've got any, any money for them at the moment, but uh, sometime, probably the end of February, I'd like to get some of their Arvin uh, figures. Uh, they're, all, they're all in the, I suppose, the latter stages, so late 60s into Vietnamization when they were um, transitioning from the Americans withdrawing and more or less trying to make the army of the Republic of Vietnam into a, a mini version of the United States Army which they've been trying to do for years uh, it never really worked um, massive corruption and uh, some units had a decent combat effectiveness uh, but a lot were riddled with with to be honest with you fellas that didn't want to be there um, uh, an officer corps that, uh, that that was all done by patronage you know friends of friends rather than than selection uh, but they did fight like an lock and that in the uh, when the when the Americans had withdrawn apart from their power and sea power they'd withdrawn most of the land forces i believe and um they did have like and lock and places like that in the early 70s uh, they did give the uh, nva uh, which is north Vietnamese army they gave them a, a, a good hiding um, but it was never going to be enough and then when the americans started drastically reducing funds uh, that also didn't help um, and it just yeah it, it was uh, it's one of those wars and one of those one of those situations where I don't know if it would have ever turned out any different. You know, it's a bit like Afghanistan now. You know, you can't prop corrupt um, politicians and just corruption seeps through from from top to bottom. Uh, you can often small units will lead by the the foreign example if you you know if you've got advisors with them or a unit that they're operating alongside you can give them the esprit de corps to be part of something and want to fight um, but a lot of the times you know fellas are put into whether it's you know something like afghanistan something like uh, vietnam they don't want to be there <laughs> you know you can fight to the last foreigner as far as they're concerned they don't want to be there but they get forced into it so they're fighting their will to fight isn't there to begin with you know um, but i would still like to do arvin forces and some of them did fight tenaciously let's not let's not um take away that from that but today we're talking about the united states marine corps who as we know all through history has fought tenaciously uh, all power to them, although that's coming from an army lad, I know, but you know, let's, uh, let's give them credit. Uh, and I've always been, as I say, I, I chose the I Corps operating area, so there's army units in there as well. Uh, but I choose, uh, when I choose to read up on, I, I read up on all things Vietnam, but 
I-Core is my bit that I try and understand the most because I think rather than being scattered scattergun approach you, you if you can drill down into a certain area and as Vietnam militarily was broken up into uh, core areas and uh, I core is the uh, the one right up on the uh, demilitarized zone with North Vietnam if you can ever really call that a demilitarized zone uh, I follow that and and the Marine Corps is good to follow because it's a complete combined arms you know Marine um, obviously the Navy's there with its corpsman and that but that you know, we've got uh, Marine Corps aircraft aviation assets, you know, Navy aviation, aviation assets. Uh, obviously, the Marine Corps has got its own armour, things like that. You know, um, you've got a, a complete combined arms uh, in, in one, in one uh, area to, to, to read up and follow. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> after all that... Uh, I've got a, I've got about another four I believe I sound doing them Roman Praetorians at the moment, uh, but I've got another four to paint up that are primed, and I've probably got about another eight um, that are sitting in the uh, sitting in bags waiting for me to want to do them. I'm not keeping these. I will put these up for sale at some stage. I love it's horrible saying you love a war, but I, I I'm really interested in the Vietnam War. Um, But I, one, financially I have to sell most things I paint. Um, and two, I'll just go and paint some more. <laughs> you know? So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, if anybody's wanting to purchase these, I'm selling these off as a collection rather than ones and twos. Um, I've got a few more to add to round it out, really. Um, but uh, it'll be sold as a, as a, if you want to call it a collection. That's what I call them. Um, you know, hit me up on the... Uh, on the email which is in the about section of the channel there's a thing you know dis channel descriptions and all that and somewhere up there's my email um, uh, uh, drop me an email if you're interested anyway let's go down and take a look at the figures right guys that guys guys thanks for joining me at the bench uh, this fella here uh, is actually taken from a photograph the sculptor had um whether Empress Miniatures asked for this particular one or, or Paul Hicks who does the sculpting for him whether he chose it but it's from an actual photograph and the back here you've got this little mascot thing can we see? You've got this little mascot uh, the, the blokes in Vietnam always seem to be carrying <laughs> superfluous rubbish on their helmets uh, I've seen guy. Oh, there's, there's one where a, a corpsman's got a, a big rubber Octopus or squid <laughs> on the front of his helmet. These obviously, but they're all things that they picked off off the battlefield. And this was a particular mascot for an American company. Uh, they used to give them away. I'm not sure if it was a petrol company or not, but um, it does say on the Empress description. Gave him a, a, a green uh, body armor, combat body armor. Uh, really nice sculpt. I stuffed up the 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 the, the paintwork on the on the fat on the the flesh and that on these and and to redo them all. Uh, so they've literally this one and the other single figures just sat on my bench for must be was it six months five months something like that. Uh, again, I've tried to do Huey was was uh, the ground in Huey was it was a couple of uh, you could see it a couple of ways. You had the busted up buildings. Uh, you had uh, obviously because they're all being fought over, uh, apart from the very, even in the very ancient city. But the Marines were told, the army were told, you know, you're not allowed to destroy certain buildings. You know how that goes. You know, you're asking people to die to save a building. You know, it's uh, to me that's not right. But hey, that's politics again. Uh, so I, each of these bases, I try and because they're Huey bases. Uh, Huey is H U E. I think there's a little hyphen on there somewhere. I just try and roughly give them some type of rubbly look, but there were other parts where they were in back gardens, uh, a, a overgrown allotment, well, allotments, but you know, uh, where no buildings have been or buildings have been torn down previously over the, the years, maybe during the French times there, because it used to be a French colony, uh, Indochina, as you probably know. Um, but what I try and do is put scatter all over it. Uh, 
This was a bit of plastic sprue that I stretched for something else. I've got a piece left. It was a bit too big, but I've used it as a, a larger calibre, uh, empty, uh, round case. Whether it's, you could say it's from a Dushka, one of 12 centimetre, 12 millimetre, 12 centimetre, oh, I can't remember, but you know, the Dushkas anyway, uh, as we used to call them in the army, but we've got smaller rounds, um, rifle rounds, cases ejected. Uh, we've got like a, I'm calling it a can of peaches or can of pineapples that um, somebody's opened at some stage and it's lying on the ground. We've got an army sea ration type canister that's lying on the ground. Um, a few obviously homemade tufts, the few I've got left. Uh, made this big flowery weed out of uh, the baking foil, which I've used on the corrugated in a minute. Uh, used that. This is like a, this isn't so. This isn't like you'd wrap your turkey or whatever up in. This is like a, from a. I think it was from last year's last year's uh, a cheesecake. Uh, base, you know these frozen cheesecake things you can get from your local, you know, from your supermarkets. Uh, wash those, degrease them, and uh, they're very, very, they're a lot thicker. Um, so uh, use those on a piece of florist wire. Put a bit of off-cut blue foam that I'd use off-cuts to make this bit of rubble and stuff. I stuck that in the top as a bit of a flower. Um, I've got so I've got a few of these little tufts I've made myself with flowers. Just stuck that on there. Again, another large cal calibre round. Tried to put a black line in just to show where obviously they they um, get, they get thinner at the top. And obviously at the base, put a round there. Now this, if you, if you want to do a piece of corrugated, if you've got one of these scalpels, I'll show you in a second, uh, it's an easy way to do a, and you can get the corrugation more, more uh, defined than that. Uh, this is a bit of evergreen plastic L shape stuff uh, but again it's just to show bits of tap that's been nailed on for whatever reason not militarily just whoever owned that place before it all got demolished you know for whatever reason that was there but it's just to show the type of ground that way was being fought over I didn't see there's no point in me putting up a giant um, wall at the side of him that's a bit too much in my opinion for a base like this uh, but it just gives the effect so if you want to do a a lot of us here in the UK anyway use these Swan Morton scalpels. Well, you can't use it for this method because it's um, it's got this type of thumb grip. But they've been really hard to come by the blades recently. Yet more shortages in the UK. Uh, so I went on to these guys, uh, which are made in Scotland. So that's good. Uh, and it's called Sir Sergi Class. Um, Fairly cheap again, just like the Swan Mortons, they come with original blade and a certain amount of sorry, handle and a certain amount of blades, I think. Um, but you get this here, this for their for their whole handle bit. And all I did was put the foil in there and then press down. But because it's the baking foil on that one, it, it could have done with being pressed down a bit harder, which I didn't do. But if you'd put some normal baking tin foil over there that you wrap your meat up on or something. Uh, that would make some really nice corrugation. Um, so just a just a tip there if you've got one of these. It's amazing you look round, <laughs> you look round what you can uh, what you can do with stuff. Um, so yeah, that's me a bit of corrugated. So that's that guy. I wanted to do this guy as Hispanic. Um, hopefully I've uh, achieved that. I always like to show all the, the different races uh, in the American uh, military in Vietnam because I think everybody should be honoured. Uh, you know, I don't want to see any you know racism or, or anything. I, I, people serve the country; they deserve to be honoured for it. Um, so this is my Hispanic guy. Uh, again, bit of plastic. Now, this was actually one of those uh, protect the protect your brushes on a, when you buy your brushes. You usually have one of these, and I keep them all, and I use them for bits of pipe. In this case, it's just a bit off cut metal pipe for whatever reason. Uh, did a, a can there, just drew a circle around it just to make, you know, the, where it's been pressed. Bit of tin foil again, the pie foil just being just shaped up, just to show just detritus on the battlefield. Uh, cup, there are, you can just about see them, there's a couple of three spent ejected, ejected rounds there. A few of my homemade tufts. 
um, and then a can of some description again just another food can of the, what was a bit of evergreen tube you know it doesn't have bear too close inspection but you know it, it does it does what it needs to He's got his pack of Marlborough smokes in his uh, hat band in his helmet band um, with his uh, bug repellent on So that's him and these are the casualties I'm saying I didn't want to do him with any blood on him or anything like that he's and I'm saying that he's been concussed from a from like a 120 mil Soviet mortar round um, that's uh, that's that's dropped near and concussed him now if you don't know in the in, I presume it's still the same uh, United States Marine Corps, it's actually the Navy that provide the medical corpsmen for it and the, the doctors and stuff like that. So this guy on the left is actually a naval corpsman um, and I thought that was uh, quite poignant. Uh, brothers in arms, into service, whatever rival the rivalry there is and there is always rivalry between the services even if it's any friendly. Uh, or even if it's a bus stop in a pub at night, <laughs> it does happen from time to time. <laughs> we won't go down that road. Uh, but and I'm talking from the British side. Um, but when the poo hits the fan, he brothers in arms or sisters in arms, as it is a lot as these days. You know what I mean? Uh, and this medic is trying to get this fella out of harm's way. He's obviously all dazed and not exactly being completely knowing what's happening. I went with the two oatmeal type. Uh, body armors on this one I thought to go for one green and one brown it would be a bit too uh, you'd expect that if that makes sense you know to break it up so I went with two green helmet covers and two because it could have just been easy as gone to a green green body armor and a frog pattern helmet on him but I wanted to show that it wasn't so thought out if that makes sense uh, his medics satchel you can't really see it but I've put some dried it's going to sound a bit horrible but I wanted to put some patina on from the blood stains um, because these guys were constantly having to on their chest on their belt buckle well, in fact they weren't that's why so many get killed and purple hearted uh, because they're having to lean over wounded guys and obviously they're forever going in the satchel for stuff pistol uh, mixed up the canteen covers again a bit of difference. I, d I don't try and do any, as I said before. I'm not going into. I'm, I might try uh, just do some squiggles uh, to do graffiti on on stuff, but I, d I don't know if it would particularly work. Uh, on the ground, I've used the thicker part of the stretch sprue, and I thought it's too thick for rounds. I'm going to actually make them shotgun cartridges, so a marine with a shotgun has been letting rip. And there's two or three shotgun cartridges um, there. A uh, bit of discarded uh, link ammo. It's, it's upside down, so you can see the link on the on the bottom. Uh, obviously, on the top, uh, you just normally see the you'll just normally see the brass rounds. Uh, but yeah, uh, these. If I ever do sell these. Uh, I can quite easily take these off. They are super glued in, but they won't take much to get them off. Just foliage wire and again, pie tin foil cut up. Uh, this guy uh, is actually a bit of coconut matting, and um, uh, I've stuck these. These are knock. They're little tiny leaves, um, and I'm, I'll be making a few shrubs out of them for myself and Rob Rimmer um, in the new year. Uh, but th I wanted to test them out on this so it's just again it's just vegetation really because a lot of the photographs I saw they weren't always in those rubble strewn areas there's some where they're taking breathers and there's actually a load of vegetation around them and you can see garden walls or walls and I'll take it it's either guard, you know, people's gardens or, or just um, scrub area around houses uh, we've got a packet of Winstons that have been flattened out on the ground there I had to go looking up all this as a non-smoker. <laughs> I had to go. Yes, I am the bloke that went up. 
60s, 60s cigarette uh, brands. <laughs> uh, we've got a busted uh, bandolier, is a word I'm after. Uh, you can see the straps bust off there and that somebody's just left it lying there. Uh, he's got a bandolier that's round his waist by the look of it. So there you go. Let's get this up a bit slightly and get the other two in. Uh, photographs at the end as always. Uh, as I say, really, really enjoyable. Uh, I do like doing these figures. It's a subject I, I like a lot, so you know it's um, that always helps, doesn't it? But uh, don't I keep saying to everyone, you know, again, it sounds like I'm wagging my finger at people, but don't ever think green is green. You know, uh, yes, that you know it, they are very slightly more grey green uniforms um, but you can do a lot with them I don't get too hung up on people you know people say oh they were greyer than that and that well they, they might have been in a photograph but we're producing little arty figures here and um, they have to be you know you have to do some some work on them to get them to, to look how you want to look make them look does that make sense not really but uh, yep really enjoyable uh, it's uh, they're fantastic figures, well sculpted. Uh, I'm glad they brought the range out. As I say, I'm not war gaming now, but I thoroughly enjoy painting, and uh, it's a subject I, I you know, I, I really enjoy working on. So um, we'll definitely see the, those other three or four figures. I think one's an M60 gunner, a couple of M16s I think in there as well. Uh, I haven't finished with the Marine range yet. I, I need to get a. Um, so he's going to try and sell them on, but uh, there's a. I want to get like a 60 mil mortar, something like that uh, that they do. Um, they also do some like full metal, I believe, some full metal jacket uh, personality type figures. May or may not get them, uh, but um, definitely get some Arvin figures. They've got Australian figures as well, and I'm a, also a big follower of the Australian New Zealand. Or Anzacs in uh, in Vietnam as well. So uh, I used to live in Australia, and uh, I, I knew a few uh, Vietnam veterans uh, through my work at the uh, Australian. Well, not work, my volunteering at the uh, at the uh, Army Museum of Western Australia. So uh, yeah, look after yourselves. Uh, there's always more coming up. I might do a Christmas. My wife's off tomorrow, so. All hell will break loose in the house from then on. So videos will come when I can make them. She'll be off for about a fortnight, I think, a week and a half, fortnight, I don't know. So it, yeah, they'll, they'll videos will come up when I when I want to put one up. Definitely need to get that marine from Guadalcanal uh, base. <laughs> Still not on the plinth. Uh, so I need to get that done between now and and say first of January. Uh, so that's definitely a video coming up because I do want to get on along with everything else. I would like to get on with painting another bust. So, um, so uh, yeah, I want to get him done and dusted. Look after yourselves. Uh, I'll try and get a Christmas video up. I don't know what it's going to be about. It'll just be a ramble. Uh, probably no figures at all. Uh, just be a catch up on how the year's gone and um, a few thank yous and all that type of good stuff. So hopefully I might get that one done tomorrow or Saturday. Uh, and uh, if not, you know, just after Christmas, but it'd be around that time. So thank you very much, guys. Take care of yourselves. Uh, as I say, uh, you can't go wrong with these uh, these Vietnam figures uh, if you fancy doing them yourselves. Uh, I say really well thought out, really well executed. Um, maybe not my painting, but the, the sculpting anyway. And uh, I say you don't have to go to town on the bases like like, like I've done. Uh, you can make the bases smaller. Uh, and just do the usual few tufts on them or whatever um, because again the one drawback with my way bases are if you're going to use them then in the in the the boondocks you're going to struggle <laughs> never mind uh, the the arvin figures i will probably do as um more you know maybe not so rubble, well, i won't put rubble on them because they'll have to go to, for, to be resold at some stage. Right, I am going, I promise you. Take care of yourselves.